Hi, this is Rick from Melissa B. Farms in Aquaponic Gardens. Today's DIY project is going to be a solar powered beeswax melter, so stay tuned. A couple of weeks ago, a friend of mine, uh, Pam Fisher, she's president of the Beekeepers Guild here, um, and I went and helped a beekeeper who was getting rid of his hives, and uh, we rehomed two of his Langstroth hives and got to digging around and found an old Warre hive uh, in his yard that he'd used as lawn art. It really hadn't worked very well for him, and we found that it had uh, attracted a hive of bees a swarm of bees. Uh, you can see that swarm here. It's very small. The hose in the middle is a, uh, a uh, bee vac hose. Uh, we uh, cornered the queen and caged her and then we vacuumed up as many as the bees we could. This is what the underside, this is upside down, um, the underside of a warre hive looks like. And this uh, is natural bee uh, formations, how they build it when you lead them to their own devices. This is some of the comb we took out. You can see us uh, where we have put it into a wooden medium frame, has no foundation, this is the Langstroth frame, and just rubber banded into place. Uh, these we placed in a Langstroth hive so that uh, the bees can fill in around it and uh, after a couple of seasons uh, you'll never know that it was a, uh, a different kind of honey hive really. Here's an illustration of a length of a uh, warre hive. It's similar to a top bar hive. It's kind of a natural way of letting the bees do this but it's very wasteful and not respectful at all of the uh, work that the bees put into making all that wax. Uh, it takes about 150,000 miles, that's six times around the earth, for honeybees to make uh, enough wax to make one pound. And so with a uh, Langstroth hive, uh, you just cut the tops off of the frames and they reuse most of that wax. Uh, here, you crush the wax, and I think it's just not a very uh, respectful thing to do if you want to be good to your bees. This is the underside of a bee. You can see here the arrows will point to where the wax glands are between the, um, the scales on the bottom and those little pieces of wax that they extrude. Um, it's uh, quite a precious commodity for the bees. It's hard for them to make. They have to make a lot of flights to uh, get that material for the wax. And so I prefer to uh, be good to the bees when I can. So that's my little... Uh, piece on uh, top bars and moray hives. Uh, they're nice as lawn art, but if you want to uh, produce honey, uh, you're actually working better with the bees if you use a traditional length stroke hive. And here's a sack of uh, cappings from my last extraction. I'm going to be using those and some wax uh, that we found in the another warre hive. Uh, swarm had taken over the hive and abandoned it for some reason. And you can see this is all wax moth damage. Wax moth damage is not an infectious disease like American fowl brood, European fowl brood, any of those things that can happen to a hive. And so it's not necessary to destroy the wax. You can actually reuse the wax, uh, reclaim it from the uh, wax moths. And that leads us uh, these two items, my uh, cappings and uh, this old comb, uh, to our project today, which is going to be a solar-powered wax melter. Made from a cooler and uh, some old scraps I had around the yard. First thing you're going to need is uh, some thermal mass to put inside the cooler. I'm using half a cinder block that I've uh, split up with this chisel and hammer. You'll need something to catch the wax. I prefer a uh, silicone 
baking pan. This is for pound cakes. Uh, that way the wax won't stick to the side. But you can use any pan that you happen to have. Uh, you can even use uh, tin foil trays if that's what you have on hand. Uh, don't run out and buy something special. It's not that big a deal. The next two items came from the dollar store, a veggie grill pan. You'll notice all the holes along uh, all throughout it. And a, um, a, a baking pan. These are sized so that they uh, uh, fit inside of each other. Uh, you want the grill pan, veggie pan, grill pan to fit inside the baking pan, baking pan. These came two to a uh, package and they were very expensive. Uh, the roasting pan, the baking pan, Take it and kind of hollow out the, uh, the, uh, the bottom, make a groove in the bottom so all the wax flows to the sides, uh, or from the sides down to the middle. And then uh, put a hole in it, I just used a knife, and cut a hole about as big around as my thumb. Then take your block or rock or whatever you're using for thermal mass, put it inside the cooler, and put your um, catch pan in. You can't tell it in this picture, but the, uh, the uh, brick is about three inches taller than the catch pan, which means that the trays are going to slope from the, the brick down to the catch pan. That's something you definitely want to have, is some way of gravity feeding that pan. Then put the uh, roasting pan into the cooler uh, with the hole toward the bottom so that the uh, wax will drain down. And then nest the uh, roasting pan or the uh, grilling pan inside of the roasting pan so that all the wax can drop down onto the pan below it. Fill the top pan with uh, beeswax. Uh, this is wax cappings from my uh, extraction session earlier in the month. Uh, be sure and uh, put them in a little bit of warm water. Uh, wash them around some. Uh, don't do this in the sink uh, in your house. It'll uh, kind of plug up the plumbing or cause problems. So you want to uh, have it as free of honey as you possibly can and set the whole thing out in the sun. Take an old window, in, uh, or just a single sheet of glass, a single pane of glass. This is an old uh, storm window I found. A double pane or triple pane is good for your house. It's not good for this project. You want to build up heat. So a single pane of glass and just set it on top of the cooler. Set the whole thing out in the sun, the slope toward the south, um, so it will get the most uh, sun possible. Depending on the season, leave it for a day or two and the wax should melt down pretty good. It's not unheard of to have to do this process maybe two or three times to get some really clean wax. Let me show you what I mean here. So it's been out in the sun. Uh, some of it's being remelted again. You can see that big chunk in the center. Uh, all that dark stuff is the uh, all the uh, wax moths, uh, web. Uh, junk that was in the wax, uh, bees, knees, and things that need to be strained out. And so it's not uncommon to have to do this once or twice to really get a good pure wax. This wax is obviously a little bit cleaner, a little bit better, but it's going to have to be melted, remelted once again. The whole secret of doing this beeswax project is to never let the temperature get above about 150. 150 degrees Fahrenheit uh, above that and the wax turns to a, a, a tannish color. It's not very attractive. If you were selling it, it wouldn't have much of a market among uh, people who are buying for wax candles and that kind of thing. This is the second melting of my wax. You can see it's considerably cleaner. Probably one more melting. Uh, I might even use a uh, straining cloth like uh, uh, the five gallon paint strainers you find them at, in the paint section at the big box stores 
uh, exceptionally good for this. It will strain out a lot of the, uh, the small, small fine stuff that you want out of your wax. So it'll be good and presentable and sellable if you want to sell it, usable if you want to use it in uh, some project around the house. You could, of course, save yourself uh, some trouble of remelting by straining through that kind of uh, uh, paint can, uh, paint strainer uh, to begin with. Uh, that way, a lot of the material won't even uh, make it to the first melting of your wax. And so that's it from Rick here at Melissa Bee Farms and Aquaponic Gardens. Uh, watch for more of our videos as we get them done. i got a lot more planned. Talk to you later and uh, keep those bees flying.